Hi, my name is Dawn Cornell with the Cornell Real Estate Group. We help our clients make smart real estate decisions. This is my first video in a long time, so if you don't mind sharing the love and giving me a like, maybe subscribing down below, I would greatly appreciate it. Today, I want to share with you a um, article that I read from Redfin, get your thoughts on how it goes. The article we're going to look at from Redfin today is housing market update pending home sales improve in January as more buyers return. I think this is really great news. So according to Redfin, uh, more demand from buyers and less supply from homeowners, new listings of homes for sale are down 18% from a year ago. That's a smaller drop than recent weeks in holding prices steady. And the median U.S. home price, it rose 11% this year up to $350,000. So right now, I'm going to tell you that I agree with this. It's talking about the supply being down and demand being up in conjunction with the last four weeks of the year, which typically, if you think about sales close to the end of the year, uh, the builders want to get things off their inventory and people like to be in a new home before Christmas time. So there's two things that are working there. The buyers want to be in their new home to celebrate the holidays with family and friends and sellers want to get inventory off the books to close out their business year. So let's take a little bit further look down into this article here. Okay, so they, they give us four little bullet points as to why this is happening. Um, we have the, it's the end of the year, which you kind of already talked about wrapping up business for the end of the year. Uh, they talk about mortgage rate applications, the seasonal adjustments, and also the Google searches for home. These are the indicators of where they think the market is going. I agree with the top three of these leading indicators. Um, Google searches on homes, they're saying that is a buyer indicator. Now, it could be that they're genuinely looking to buy a new home. They could, though, be just looking for um, floor plan ideas. They could be looking at interior decorating plans. They could be dreaming. They could actually be looking to lease and not to buy. So leading indicators that Redfin is giving to us, I agree with three out of four of those. I do think rate changes are an indicator. I think that the more applications, that's an indicator of movement and wanting the desire to buy a home. And I agree that um, seasonally, yes, it does affect when people want to move, buy, sell, and perhaps lease real estate. So let's go on to the article a little bit further down. The next portion of the article talks about database on homes listed or sold during that period. Sales went up 1.1% 1 .1 to 349000 That's the biggest gain in over a month. Uh, the median asking price of a newly listed home 367. So right there, I want you to look at that. The first piece of information was the sale price versus the ask price. That's why you got almost a $20,000 spread there. Third bullet point, almost among the 50 most popular U.S. metros, sale prices fell 17%. So we want to look at this as a nationwide what's going on. And then we can drill down later what's actually happening in Houston. But nationwide, we did see prices fall 17% in the bigger cities. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about the median sale price up 1.1% over last year. Now, 1% is not really a big number. It could be for a lot of things. We're seeing this dip. Um, maybe it's the fear of missing out. Maybe people just thought they uh, the timing was right for them. Remember, we had a lot of sales activity that happened over the summer. And when you have all that activity over the summer, you're going to have some people that just quite weren't ready to be on that wave. So I think we're seeing that 1% uptick as a year over year number is still being high because it's the trailing end of that demand. There was a lot of multiple offers. A lot of people lost out on those multiple offers. They kind of took a break from looking. So I think we're seeing some of them return back to the market. That gave us the little 1.1 uptick there. Let's check out the next slide. That one was with our median sale price. This chart here is talking about home buyer mortgage payments up 29.3% year over year. So if the average price of the house was 350, 
you have mortgage rates that are swinging 1%. When you boil that down, that comes out to about $300 a month more in your principal and interest payment. So yes, your home price is going to go up as a result of the mortgage rate going up. It's a simple, straight mathematical thing. And that is a separate conversation than what did you actually buy that house for? Did you save the fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars on the purchase price? This um, chart here that we're talking about where the prices go up, I'm saying that's mostly derived from that high interest rate tick that we had right there in November. And you can see that the mortgage rates, I mean, the home buyer payments fell just a little bit when the mortgage rates came down. So I'm going to directly tie this slide, home buyer mortgage payments, to the interest rates. So I'm going to agree with Redfin on that one. Let's go ahead and check out the next slide that they have for us. This is the last slide I want to share with you guys today. This is four and a half months of supply available on the market. Now, one thing I want to remember this picture in your mind with this red line here. See how it goes up? What this chart does not tell you is the number of building permits that were um, approved all through these summer months. So more and more permits were being done. So more and more inventory was being built and coming on the market. That's why you're seeing so much inventory there. Ironically, November, as it hits the high point here, the number of building permits has declined. Builders were building all this stuff, but they didn't keep putting in for more permits. So you're going to see this four and a half months of inventory as we exit the year. But it's also on the decline of inventory. So when we go into 2023, this you can see it before it even happens. There's not going to be as much inventory. So naturally, home prices are going to go up just due to this number here of only four and a half months supply. So as we exit 2022, we move into 2023, you can already see how the red lines trailing down. Inventory is going to be decreasing as we come into the first quarter of 2023. And tomorrow, check back in with me to, again. You're going to need to know some things about what I see in the future, about when is a good time to buy and how to make a smart real estate decision. I'm Dawn Cornell with the Cornell Real Estate Group.